Let me read to you a passage from the 15th chapter of St John's Gospel, verses 9 to 11. It's the Gospel for the Thursday of the fifth week of Eastertide. St John writes, Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. That's from John chapter 15 verses 9 to 11. Our Lord speaks to us of joy. You know, have you ever noticed how when political elections are upon us, all the billboards show the candidates to be smiling broadly? If a person gets his photo taken, he makes a point of smiling. Movie stars show themselves as contented or even as laughing. They would like it to be thought that they are always happy, but of course their private lives show this not to be so. Celebrities know that a single picture can give the impression that they are usually sad. It is indicative of the fact, however, that happiness is attractive. People are drawn to those who seem to be happy and are instinctively repelled by those who seem to be sad. This itself indicates that we all have the conviction that we are meant to be happy and that whatever might be our circumstances life is successful if we are truly happy. Happiness is a fundamental goal of human life yet we all know that a person can be very mistaken as to what kinds of goals will bring this happiness. Wealth alone cannot bring it nor can popularity alone nor can position nor can power because we see people with all these attainments who do not appear to be especially happy. Of themselves these good things do not bestow happiness. A humble wife and mother can be very happy, while a billionaire or prime minister can easily be unhappy. In fact one wonders how many people ever attain happiness in life. I suspect that most people never attain enduring joy, but get along in life with a limited degree of it, compensating for this by the enjoyment of various pleasures. It is easier to obtain pleasure than it is to acquire joy. It all points to the fact that man is meant for joy, and yet for a great number of persons joy and happiness remain elusive. It is also clear that a person can be joyful in the midst of difficulties and sorrows. A husband and wife who are deeply in love with one another have a corresponding joy while experiencing difficulties and sorrows. How many parents set out to show their children the path to happiness and joy? The problem is that so many are unable to do this because they do not know what it is that joy consists in and how to attain it. On one occasion, Mark chapter 10, verses 17 to 27, our Lord was setting out on a journey when a man ran up, knelt before him and asked, What must I do to inherit eternal life? He was seeking the happiness and joy of heaven. Our Lord looked steadily at him and loved him, we read. How wonderful to be the object of the loving gaze of Jesus Christ. Christ loved him and accorded him his admiration. He then told him the path to happiness and joy. Yes, continue to keep God's commandments, he said, but there is one thing you lack. If you wish to be perfect, go and sell all you have and give to the poor. Then come back and follow me. The path to that joy and happiness then consists in obeying God's commandments and following Jesus Christ in love. Now there is no other prophet in the Old Testament 
who presumed to assure others that perfection would come from leaving all and following him. In fact, I cannot think of any other religious leader of significance, any other founder of a respectable religion, nor indeed any philosopher of note who pretended to such a thing. It is an astonishing assurance that the perfection of moral goodness and joy would come by loving and following a particular person. But so it is. Following the incident just discussed, Peter asked our Lord what those would receive who had left all to follow him. Luke chapter 10 verses 28 to 31. He replied that they would receive a hundredfold in this life, not without persecution, and eternal life in the next. So we have it on the word of Christ that it is possible to attain joy and happiness in this life, but not without the presence of difficulties. The way to it lies in a personal friendship with Jesus Christ that is manifested in the following of him. All of this brings us to our Gospel today from, from John chapter 15 verses 9 to 11 which speaks of the love of Jesus Christ for each of us. Our friendship with, with Christ is founded on his love for us. Had that young man accepted Christ's invitation, it would have been based on Christ's loving gaze. On this is founded the joy of man. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. The good news is that man can be happy. He can attain to joy. But he must look sharp lest he never find it because it is not found merely by chance, nor is it found in the ways most people imagine. Joy is not mere pleasure. Ordinary experience indicates that man's truest joy comes from being loved and loving in return. It has been revealed who it is who loves each and all of us, and wherein lies the greatest joy for every man. It lies in the love of Christ for us and in our response to this love, the response of following him in love and obedience. Let us seek the joy of Christ then.